There it is. Chat. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're doing this. I think we're doing this. I think we're doing this thing. We got the A cam. We got the B cam. We got picture. Got to make sure I close out of my other windows. Don't want my email up there. How's everybody doing today? We're chilling here. Got a new little setup. Checking out the, uh, you know, little live stream setup. Trying to get there this thing is. worked out. Chat. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're doing this. Oh. I think we're doing Dude, this. My, hold on. I got to. There we go. Hold on. I got to. I got to get out of these windows. Boom. Sinking pause. Boom. Hold up. Hold up. Let's do this thing. I'm going to show you how I mix live albums. Okay, so I got a show that I did for my last Europe tour in Utrecht. And this is for my last Europe tour. I forgot to eat lunch because we were setting this thing up. So I'm going to rock a sparkling water and whatever these chips are that were in my basement. Let's rock. All right, here we go. I am going to show you what I got for my mix session. Let's see here. Here's what I do. I got all the files in here. Okay. I get them all looking clean, looking cute. That is what needs to happen right now because this right now looks like a mess. Okay. So for me, when I'm doing my mix sessions, I got to make it look pretty. I just, I need it to look. I can't talk and do this at the same time right now. So I'm going to do this. Drums. Let's make these drums all one color. Okay. Let's make the bass all one color. Let's make the keys all, uh, that's too many for keys. Let's do greenish for guitar. Then I got all these horns. We're going to make the horns brass-ish. That's kind of the color of their instruments. The vocal, my vocal will be, yeah, that. Antoine's vocal will be similar. Room mics. Oh, the room mics are so good. We're going to go down. I'm going to I'm going to show you kind of how I mix these, what I do. So I have a template built. This is just me plugging into the template, okay? My friend Alex Keel is on the road with me. When we get done with a show, when we get done with a show, we get the files from my front of house engineer, Miles Hansen. Keel loads them into here, and boom, I have him put in the markers for the songs. I'll make notes on the songs and that sort of thing. And we did a little bit of stuff on here already just to get it in a good place. So let's start with the drums. Here's what you got. Here's Assassin. Here's what the drums sound like. A lot of bleed. That's just what's going to happen. I got to go picture in picture for you so you can see this. Here we go. Vincent Garcia. Quad Cortex with no plug-in. This is just straight up dry DI guitar. Kind of fun to just add a little bit of that top end fuzz. Then we got the horns. Live, baby. That's live. It's that live character. So I have them panned in the way that I normally like them in my ears. Alto a little left, tenor a little right, Barry a little left, trumpet straight down the middle. I like that sucker. Yeah! Right into my... Right into me. And then I got some other effects. So if, if I'll sometimes copy down... Uh, some things that are happening, so like for a, a certain tenor solo or something. I just like to have some grit on it. We'll get into that. We got vocals. What's going on here? Just a straight up. That's Kenny Holman. That is Kenny Holman indeed. We got Antoine Stanley. Ooh, oh. 
Antoine Stanley, hi man. Then we got the room. This this room is dope. This is one of my favorite rooms in the world to play. It's the Rhonda stage at Tivoli Vandenberg. Vandenberg in Utrecht. Get the crowd energy. Oh, don't want to get the uh, copyright license there. What's going on here? Crowd energy. Let's get some crowd energy. Good crowd energy. The crowd is stoked. I'm feeling that. All right, so that's the session. And then I got some different bus stuff. I go with all of it into a mix bus where I have some plugins. Doing a lot of heavy lifting with the plugins here. A lot of heavy lifting on the master bus. We'll get into that. Okay, that's where some of my, my magic sauce is on the whole thing. And that's just the way it is. So we're going to dive in a little bit to Smoke Show here. What's going on? Got a clap stack going. These are going to be cool for like three more years. And it's not going to be cool to play on a clap stack. It's like the splash in the late 90s, I'm calling it. Room a little loud? Maybe a little more guitar on that, huh? I think overall I need a little more guitar. I'm just gonna clip gain it up. Boom. Couple dB. I ain't worried about it. Don't overthink it. Just clip gain. Let's see how the drums are feeling. You want to go? You want to go one by one? We'll go one by one. Okay? We can go one by one on the mics. We can go by one by one. Cats are wanting to know what's going on. Turn the groups off. Here's the kick in mic. This is my favorite drum gate. You can choose, and it's smart. See gets smarter when you tell it what it is some eq on there get some of the ooh out of there add a little punch and crunch trigger warning here we go there's a kick trigger sue me ooh we got to get that re-trigger dialed up Yeah, that one's not. Good thing it's pretty low. Kick out, Mike. This one, you know, that sounds good. There's the kicks together. Let's pull that trigger one down a little bit. That one's kind of no need, you know what I'm saying? Snare top. Just a little bit of reduction. Let's do a little more there. See? That gate's doing a lot. Doesn't need to do so much. Because otherwise you lose some of those. Uh, let's give it a little more juice. I don't want to lose the grace notes. Here's without the EQ. See, get, out, get that out of here. Cleaner. Just a little crack in there. Just a little crack in the trigger, okay? This thing's just nothing. Not doing a dang thing. Just in there to waste more hard drive space. Okay. Snare bottom. That's without the EQ. Yeah, that's good. Snare on a full snare here. That'll do. 
Hi, Hat Mike. Normally, I would take out a little more of the low end, but for whatever reason, I've been liking leaving some of this low end. Here's without the EQ. So you get some of the in there. Let's take that out. The bass amp is kind of pointed at the drums, so we don't want that in there. This is the hard one. Toms are hard. Toms are hard with live because you want that ooh, ooh in there. So it uh, it's just hard to get that because the snare ends up coming through. So here's the three toms. And you'll get... This guy needs to come up a little bit. And actually, it looks like he's just not as hot. So I'm going to clip gain up all around. See what I did there? I'll undo that for you so you can see. I just take that whole clip. Boom, boom, boom. Clip gain it up a little bit. It's going to hit the tree. It's going to hit the uh, gate a little harder. Open up. See, that sounds like garbage here, but that's just the that's solo. Okay, the clap stack. It's it's fine. I put a little decapitator on it to put some crunch, you know. That's without it. Add some crunch to it. Uh, again, I think some are selling these things. The clap stack is cool right now. When it's utilized like an actual clap, it sounds like an electronic clap. That's cool. When it's used outside of that, I'm not interested. I do think it's one of those things. It's very fun. It's in vogue right now. Clap stack's great. I don't, I don't think it's timeless. It's fun right now. I stand by that. Overheads. Let's see what's going on with the overheads. Let's take the plugins off. A lot of audience in there. I like that hype. I like the hype. I like the audience being stoked. Taking some of that low out. Let's. How much is too much? I normally like the overheads to have a pretty good full picture of what's happening. There's a little like a with those rides. I might clean that up just a tiny bit. And this guy, the mid side, I like this. It takes everything below. So check this out, all the way mono. Everything below a certain frequency is now mono. So here's fully mono. I like this plugin. So now it's everything under, I don't know, 330-ish hertz is mono. Add a little bit of the Wolf comp just for some of the vibe. Drum bus, doing a little bit of work here. Maybe I'll pull this guy back. It's dry DI, right? EQ. Now, the reason why I did this kind of EQ is because I made a duplicate of this, added the SVT, added the transient master. I'm a huge fan of transient plugins because these sort of things, it takes some of that sustain and it pulls it out. It gets, it gets a little more attack, but I don't have it on the original DI. So here's this one on its own. And now them together here that a lot they're going into this one wanted to add a little top end a little compression on there honestly not very much uh, do a little more match the volume okay and then I have it going into the this little bit of multi-band compression happening. Fine. Let's get into these keys. Ooh. That Nord is nice. Nice. 
nice patch on the Nord KG. Kevin Gastongway here. I'm just doing a little bit of a high pass at 55. Making a difference? Not really. Just kind of clearing a little bit. I don't want to do anything that's going to take. He's really not feeding any information that's. Sorry, didn't have that up. He's really not feeding any information below this, you can see. So I'm just keeping that clear for for everything else that should be low. Okay, B3. On the left and right, the mics that are up top. So I have, we got two mics on the top of the horn and then one on the bottom that's getting more of the bass. So these are the ones that are up top. And then the one on the bottom, I'm leaving a little more low. I should actually keep a little more low in there. I'm going to bump that a little bit. But I'm going to make it dynamic in the event that it gets a little much. There we go. That's what's happening. How we doing, Carter? Getting some lag, huh? Some dropouts. Some dropouts. Oy, oy, oy. Getting some. Carter's right down here. You can see him. He's helping me get this worked out here. We're getting this thing together. Let's talk, let's talk about this guitar, though. Let's not. Little rushy, Corey. Adding a little bit there and a little different on the other side just to give it a thing. And actually, if you see this, what's happening is you can see the amp on the right is not quite as loud as the amp on the left. So what we're going to do, we're just going to straight up add a, I don't know, not that much. We're going to... We're going to add a few dB there. Whatever. Fine. Basically, nothing compressing happening there. Listen to this. Because this doesn't have any amp simulation on it. I wanted to add a little low end, tame the top end a little bit, simulate a cab tiny bit. Adding a little low end. This is what I'm saying. Cats always take the low end out of my guitar. You don't get that thump. Jeez. Keeping the thump in there. Taking out that, controlling it a little bit. intonation another little taming of the top end Ooh, here's here's something I started doing adding a little room here's without it actually I have a reverb on so let's get somewhere where it's not um, like here's an assassin or is this see it just adds a little bit of with the mid side.
guitar a little loud there, huh? Clip gain that sucker down a little bit. That's ah, fine. Oh, come on, Vincent. Vincent Garcia, dude. Let's get the drums a bit. That's just the bass and drums. See how much bleed there is in the drums? That's what I'm saying. Like, who cares when you're in the studio? A lot of bleed. I mean, it's still. Room mics. I like that much room mic in there. Nice. There we go. All right, now let's get to the horns. Well, that's a good one to show the horns on. Hmm. La da dee da da dee da dee da. -da. Well, let's just stay with Assassin, huh? Uh, yeah, that's nice. Alto sax. See, I like to do some just taming of the the honk in there, you know. So here's no EQ. Takes a little bit of that out. Tenor sax. Kenny's tone is real bright, but I wanted to add some low end to it also. So here, check that difference. Here's no EQ. Little nasally. Now we add some body, tame the nasal a little. That's what I'm talking about. Barry Sachs. Here's no EQ. See? It's a little nasally in there. A lot of saxophones. With that kind of mic, that's just what you get with it. So add a little low end. Take some of that around 1 to 2K. It, and every horn sounds better when you dip a little bit of that. Jay Webb naturally doesn't have as much of that as most trumpet players. His tone is a little rounder. Honestly, I'm going to take a little... I'm going to tame this top end a little less on Jay. He's got a nice... His tone is nice and bright. It's like the, the right amount of bright. Sometimes you get that bright trumpet that's <laughs> piercing in your ear. Jay's is quite wonderful. Same thing with the trombone. I want to add a little low end on this. Here's no EQ. Here's with the EQ. Yeah. And actually, on the bay, on the Barry Sax, another thing is I, I had the decapitator. Check this out. Forgot to show this. Here's without it. Here's with it on. Just adds a little to it. It's nice. And then, the way that I do this is I have the woodwinds or the saxes. The winds go into a winds bus. That has its own version of an EQ compression. And the brass go into their own compression and EQ. And then both go into an all horns bus. This drives John Fields crazy. Sorry, John. It's just what I do. There we go. That's just... I. That's just how I do it. It's kind of double compressing, but it's, I don't know, it's fine, right? Helps bring the horns right out front so they're right in your face. And my 
my vocal. I like to just leave my vocal up. This is what it sounds like right there in front of me. Oh, he's about to say something. Other one. I just pull out some of that. Oh. <laughs> That's what it sounds like standing right where I'm at. D flat indeed. And then the room mics, I'm just taking out some of that low end. See, here's the room mics with no EQ. I just want to tame some of that low end because otherwise it gets a little sloppy in there. Now, this is not giving any credit to my master bus. Okay, I got to I got to pay respects to the master bus. Sounds good. But here we go. Trim, I just kind of adding a little bright, adding a little bright and low. Adding a little punch and crunch. A little tape satch. A little exciter. A little compression. And right now I just have this guy on just to so it's not blasting yours out. I don't know, the input on here was too much. So I just pulled 4 dB out of the So that's what's going on there. One of the fun things though is getting in with the effects, you know, so it's I got a big reverb send here. Okay, one thing you're going to notice, we got some noise, okay? Do we deal with the noise because it's a live album and you just deal with it? Here, let me show you what it's like fixing that what what you what a normal mixing engineer would do listen to this so we're nice and intimate very exposed right that's just the horns but if you mute that my amps are making some noise mute and now it's better right yeah, it is. It's cleaner. So here's without muting that. And now I'll mute it. This takes that annoying sound out of there, right? Another way I could do it. Yeah, I could gate it. I could throw a gate on the guitar thing, but I just I don't want to put a gate on it because sometimes what it does is it messes with the reverb, so the tail of the reverb gets cut off sometimes with a gate, and I just I'm not I'm not about that right now. Yeah, getting into it here. Little delay. You know what I gotta do is on the delay, I need to make sure the tempo is right. This tempo is like, oh, what's going on here? Smoke show is about 113 ish, I think. Let me put it around 113. See if that. <laughs> Yeah, that delay feels better. Put it in time, right? Here's a question for you. Is the are the room mics too loud? Carter, tell me what the people say. I like the room mics like this. 
I like the room mics up. You get the energy of the room. But I wonder if I pull the room mics down during the song and I just automate them up in between. But I, I like this. I like the energy. <laughs> Yeah. I like the room mics. Matter of fact, what I think I what I should do, I want to give you some context here also. I'm going to find the video from this show, and I think it has a board mix from when we first did this, so give me a second here. Like the room mics? Can I play an ad here? I'm trying to press add. That's not showing it on there. See, I'm trying to get ads, dude. I'm trying to get ads. I'm trying to get some ads going. Okay? Boo is not working. Boo is not working. <sighs> What's going on here, dude? What's going on? Yeah. See, I got a little stream deck going. This is what I'm saying, dude. First stream from the house, dude. First stream from the house. Not working, dude. I'm not doing it. I'm trying to run ads, dude. <laughs> Slick, dude. It was working literally 30 minutes ago. That's why. That's why. Here we go. Hold on. Give me a sec. Go for it, baby. Go get it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, dude. We're selling out here. We're selling. Okay? It's a free live stream. You're going to deal with a couple ads that I made. Okay? This is free. Back to the... So, so give you some context of what's happening. This is a show we did in Utrecht. I can never say it right. Here's here's the place. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sucker screaming. This is the board mix. Miles Hansen board mix right here, I believe. Not a lot of audience in there, you know? Because why would you? Oh! You know what? I'm looking at this. I'm remembering. Somebody stole my sunglasses off the front of the stage on this gig. I'm dead serious. I was wearing sunglasses, as you can see here. Wearing sunglasses. They fell off at some point. And I was sweating, you know, I took the sunglasses off. It's sometimes nice. Get out there, scan the crowd. I don't have to feel it. Sometimes when I'm on stage, it's like I'm I'm just scanning the crowd, just getting a vibe, and I'll I'll end up like locking eyes with somebody. I'm like, ah, ah no, no, like I didn't mean to like yeah, cool. Hey, you know, sometimes it's weird, like I I don't know. Sometimes it's great, you get a good connection. I do like that, but occasionally I'm just like kind of thinking and staring and somebody's like oh he's it, it's like oh are you staring at me i'm like no no no. i'm just literally thinking about what's my next thing here am i 
playing my most efficient, whatever. I took the sunglasses off. Anyways, that's why I wear sunglasses, because sometimes I'm like in my head about it. Take the sunglasses off, put them down in front of the stage. Somebody took my sunglasses. As a matter of fact, at some point, I bet we'll be able to see who grabbed them. One of these people in here took my sunglasses. We're going to find it. Actually, I do have a front of house camera. I have multiple cameras from this show. And there is a drum cam where you see the entire front row the whole time. We are going to find out who stole. Oh, yeah, and I was in a boot. That's when I sprained my ankle. Pretty bad. Ooh, you don't want to see those pictures. Anyway. Anyway, let's let's take a look at Smoke Show. Not a lot of audience there. Now is this one? Let's see. I like hearing the audience. I like having the audience in here. That's fun. The audience is fun in there. Here's the board mix. Oh, you get some audience in there. It's funny, you can hear like it's bleeding mostly through overhead right because he's close to the audience there. But here. All right, now let's get to Antoine's vocal. Uh, here's one that we did. Oh, we did three on E, dude. Did a Wolfpack tune here. Did three on E. Oh! Lot of bleed. Uh! What are we gonna do about Before that? Before I leave, I think I hear something very familiar. One more time. If you know. uh. Ooh, yeah. Got some EQ. If you know the song, Got some compression. Right? Vocal writer. on some of these some of these vocal tunes the horns just need to come down so I'm just going to clip gain them down eh, one and a half dB take my headphones off to see you how it sounds from afar. Is the vocal too loud? Is it fine? I think it's good.
Yeah. We were changing the horn arrangement a lot on this one, mid-tour. Let's take a listen to that, that stair step of the horns here. You could tighten up a little there. Could tighten up a little there. Nice boink, Jay. Yeah. Come on, Michael. Nice arrangement. Oh, Dan. I'm going to do one thing as long as you guys don't tell anybody. Dan's going to be pissed about this note. You kind of choked on that note. Just a little. Oh! Don't tell. Don't tell anyone, okay? Don't tell anyone. I made an edit. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, everybody's saying boo. Boo. You made an edit. Yeah, big deal. Oh, hold up, hold up. That's tight, Michael Nelson. Come back at me. Let's walk up. Oh, I got to hear that again. That's sick. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. All right, what else? Antoine's got the work it out thing. Oh, yeah, I'll see what the crowd is. Come on, you right. Oh, that's sick. Guitar a little loud, maybe. I'll flip gain it down. Fine. 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 Say I never did anything for you. Let's get the horns in there. What's going on? Michael Nelson voicings, dude. You know, I think this could have been a little more powerful. Bop, bop. Ow. That's all right, though. I'm just getting picky. That's fun. Come, 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 come. Yo, Vincent, where you at, bro? Call her me stoked, dude. Put the sunny T moves on it. The oi, oi, oi. Where is it in the show? Let's let's get some. Where's that on video? We got that on video. Oh, this is. Just have a little bit. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, see, he's bending those. You gotta play, boy! Boy, you boy, you boy. Give it up for Vincent, y'all! How is everybody doing tonight? Now, I know Corey has shown you a lot. Very fun. We'll see how... Do we? Hold up. Do I need a little more lower on this guy? Comments. Uh, what do we, what do we feel about the bass? Okay, I'm talking bass and kick, just the low end in general. Clean enough? Do we need more? Less? Look at me. I'm, I'm on my. Excuse me, Antoine. That's so Michael Nelson right there. That's straight up Michael Nelson. Dude, this right here. That's sick. We got to listen to this horn solely. Soloed. This is live. Okay, this is live. Where did that video go? Uh, oh, my gosh. Now we're... Okay. Hit me on the back. Oh, yeah, right here, dude. Right there. This cat's digging it. Right here, lower right. This person right here. Check this. Just grooving. That's how I'm grooving. Got the purse down front, too. Not letting anybody next to you. I'm keeping that sucker out front. You're not stealing that from me. Right there. Grooving. That's how I'm grooving. Oh. Just want to put the dance moves on it. Now let's 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 check these. Woo! 
Dan White, don't mean to throw you under the bus. Where were you on this line? It's all right. Oh, that's a nice ending, though. That's nice. Put the foghorn on it. Low and top. That's nice. Great chord. We're just going to, yeah, we'll, we'll turn them down there. You know what happens? It's okay. It's okay. You know? Sometimes, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes... Sometimes, let me hit that back again. Bomb. And it's okay. And I know Dan White's feeling bombed right now. Especially I called him out on the live stream. Okay? I'm sorry, Dan. I, I, there's plenty of mistakes that I made, too. Plenty of mistakes. Let's just go to meditation. You can find any there. Ooh. I'm already see a little bit out of the pocket right there, you know. deal with it we're gonna let's take a look at this though meditation guitar intro am i doing a live in europe album yeah but right now from what i remember the best two shows on the tour were in utrecht and london so uh that's that and actually paris was great but they wanted uh eighty eight hundred dollars <laughs> i can't believe i'm saying this they wanted $8,800 for me to be able to use the audio and even one camera. It's called an origination fee in the biz, okay? Financial transparency. It's okay to talk about these things, all right? A lot of people won't talk about them. There's an origination fee associated with a lot of rooms and shows. Some of them, it's like, oh, yeah, you want to release something from our room? You got to pay us a lot of money. I didn't want to spend $8,800 on, on it. What was I going to do? So, anyway. Uh, but I think this was... I do remember thinking this was a great show. Oof. Just trying something, you know? Just trying something.
Well, there goes the delay. Oh, he's going to arpeggiate with the delay. Fearless Flyers 4. Thank you, Blue Note. Thank you, Blue Note, New York City. No origination fee. Thank you, Blue Note. Blue Note's dope. They waived the origination fee. Thank you for bringing that up. Aaron Jordan, Fearless Flyers. Shout out to Alex at Blue Note. All right. You want some arpeggios? Okay, well, playing this thing. See how. Side snare coming in. First time we've seen this side snare. Really not allowing that. Uh, uh. Kind of uh y, huh? Is that good though? Like, is this helping or not? So, you know, that little noise in there. It's like here it's kind of it sticks out, but in the in the mix, it's that's the important thing is how does it feel in the mix? I took all that body up. See? That's the difference. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Trigger warning. Adding a little snap to it, you know. The problem is, I think, when the main snare is not being played, I don't think I really need it. The main snare is not happening at all in this song. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip gain. I'm not going to take them all the way out. I'm going to clip gain them down a lot and see if that helps clear up the... <laughs> feels like it's maybe what's... There. I'm gonna take out the stuff that's around it. Do this. That cool. That cleans it up a little. Guitar solo. Couldn't be pentatonic too long, you know. Uh, some 
sevenths. Thing that doesn't always get appreciated. This horn arrangement's cool at the end here. A little cascading. That's fun. That's fun. Let's get into something else fast. Soloed guitar part here. Vincent sounds like soloed on this cat's dope. I think I need more B3 on this, huh? Clip gain damn white up a little bit there. I just like that pumping. Before somebody's like, hey, I was told not to make it so it fills the whole thing. I don't look, I, I can make it so it all fills the whole thing. I can make it so it's all tiny. I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Nice. That's nice. You want to see something that's real fun though. Let's get it. Let's just get into some fun, you know. Vincent Garcia, dude. <laughs> hmm. You know, 
know what though? Hold on. I'm too distracted. Uh my guitar tone is a little papery there, so what I'm gonna do I'm just do a little audio suite on these clips. I'm gonna add a tiny bit here. Take some of that out a little bit. There we go. I'm going to do that on all three of those. Tone's a little papery there. Okay. I myself. I want to sound good, okay? Where are you, Vincent? I need to turn Vincent up there. A lot. surgical why am i not getting too surgical with it i'll tell you why because in a live mix front of house engineer is kind of doing stuff like this it's not just immediate cook, 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 cook. just just getting there you know More snare bottom from Lee. More snare bottom. Let's see what that feels like. There's a, there's a lot of snare bottom. Not a tiny bit there. Sure. Let's go back. And Jeez, Jay. Bass quiet overall. General mix feedback, come at me. Bass is feeling better now, huh? Dare I say. Okay, if that would mean a little, huh? I think I made a mistake by trying. 
turning that one guitar thing up. General mix. All right, let's see. No, no, let's try. Pump, pump, Drums weak but good. What does that even mean? Oh, Kevin, where are you going? Vincent, that is sick. I'm going to turn the kick up a tiny bit, turn the clap stack up a tiny bit against my own will. guitar please <laughs> more me more me less keys Well, I know a fun little trick. Fun little trick is uh, on some of those stops to just make everybody silent. Every man I meet is walking time. The freedom wonder path just Am I gonna get surgical? That's on me. Sue me. I'm about to do it. Don't tell anybody. Do not tell anybody what I'm about to do. Don't tell a single person. I'm about to move me up a 16th. Look at that. Just. This is on me. Okay. You can boo me all you want. You can boo me. Listen to this. It's terrible. Oh! Oh! Just move it a little. Do you believe, my friend, what you claim? 
Don't tell anybody what I have done. Clip gain down one dB. It's live, baby. We'll deal with it. Night that never sleeps. It's love you've ever known. Yeah. Love is written in the stone. And oh, 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 eh. In the stone, you'll find the thing. You're not standing tall. There's something about the way you look at me. Something about you. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. What's going on here, oh yeah? It's I like the overheads hot. I like the overheads hot. How do we feel? How are we feeling? Starting to, starting to get there. Starting to get there, you know?
think it's starting to feel good. All right, I'm going to do a quick, I'm going to do a quick fun one. I'm going to show you how it sounds in my ears when we're playing live. I'm going to do a save as Corey in ear mix. I will show you exactly how it sounds in my ears because, uh uh-oh, dirty little secret, dirty little secret. Yeah, we're playing along to a click track some of the time. Okay? Oh, yeah, boo, boo. Yeah, whatever. Get out of here. Get over yourself. This, you want to know what it sounds like in my ears? It's basically this, but I have a lot more overheads. I have a lot more bass. I have more guitar. This is pretty much what it sounds like in my ears. Take the room way low. So, for example, this is what it's like in my ears. Actually, I, I like to have. Enough click where it's there, but if the drums are really smack and you don't really. If I'm being honest with myself, I probably have more bass in my ears. What it sounds like in my ears. Your mix right here.
That's it. That's how I like my ears to sound. Now, I am afforded that luxury because we've been using the Midas HD96 console, and I have an app on my iPad where I can change the EQ, compression, gates. I can do literally everything that I'm doing here on this. I do on my iPad, and my front of house engineer, Miles, is incredible. He really helps get it all set up, and on this last run, we had uh, Connor as our A2 stage tech and kind of helped facilitate a lot of that. But really, I go in there, and I'm EQing everything because the way that we're hearing it in our ears, most of us have similar in-ears that we use. I use the Shure 535s. I don't know where my ears are. I think they're in my guitar case. But on the Shure ears, we're mostly on those, so they're they're similar profile as far as the way that they sound. <coughs> so I'm able to carve out frequencies that are obnoxious, leave stuff that's good, and uh, compress the things that need to be compressed, and I can pan things however I want. And honestly, it's like, oh, well, what about a, a great monitor engineer? Yes, monitor engineers, blah, 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 blah. monitor engineers are great, but in my band, there are 12 of us who have a lot of opinions on how their ears should sound, and it's actually a lot easier if we have one person who can kind of make sure everything is set up and great, and then we can kind of tweak on our own, so that way it's not 12 people yelping at somebody, and it's a lot easier, easier especially for throw-and-go festivals, where it's like, this band ends at 5.30, and you start at 6.15. Okay, that means 12 of us have to get on stage, get all the gear, all the mics set up, checked, everything plugged in correctly, and sound check, and if I have all this stuff preset and saved from my Midas console, it's all there. And it's it's within, I don't know, 5 10% of, of the last time that we were there. So, yes, somebody's asking, do I have molds? I do have a couple sets of molded in-ear monitors. They're great, but honestly, I like the Shure 535s better, universals. And that way also... Uh, I can just go to any guitar center and pick them up if I want or just call my Sweetwater rep, Anthony, and be like, yo, my ears are acting up. Can you send me some new ones? And that's that. So that's kind of how I'm mixing my my sessions these days. Hope you're digging it. I will leave this up. Comment below. Tell me uh, how I should fix it because I'm just listening on my my earbuds. Now, I'm going to throw it on the speakers. And it's probably going to be too much low end, whatever. But this is the way that most people are listening nowadays. So it's not terrible. Like I, I put it, I'm going to put it on my speakers. I'll listen a little more there. But it's like, I know how these sound. I know how stuff feels in here. So thanks for hanging. We'll see you next time. I'm hitting you. I'm hitting you with a commercial. Okay. I'm hitting you with a commercial. This is a free live stream. Deal with a commercial. Peace out. What's happening? This is Corey Wong. I'm here to introduce the Wong Compressor. If you're somebody who's been looking for the most versatile compressor that's ever existed on the market for guitar or bass, Wampler and I have designed this pedal to be a compressor and boost and DI. You have attack, tone, sustain, volume, blend, and boost. Talk about versatility. I'm one of those people that if I only had one pedal I could use, it'd be a compressor. I will stand by that for the rest of my life. Could there be a better compressor on the market right now? The answer is no, this is the best. Wow. This pedal is available today. Just go to any dealer that sells Wampler pedals.